12 rounds, bro. I'm comfortable, though. But I am getting a little hot. Oh, now he's shaking. See, I knew it was coming. <laughs> It's Lamar Rose Jr., the Reaper, and this is my moment of spotlight, spotlight. Okay, he started off with the Reaper, for sure. <laughs> How you doing, man? Y'all know what's going on, Moment of Spotlight, episode 18 for the year. Join me, bro. I got the one and only Lamar, a.k.a. the Reaper, Roach. You know, I want to start off giving you flowers, bro. Like, you sport a fantastic career, 25, 1-1. One one. You feel me? They call you the Reaper. And now you got one of the biggest fights of your career in front of you, bro. You and Tank, y'all facing off. I fight for the both of y'all. This is a real pivotal moment in y'all career. Being that y'all faced off Junior Olympics, and then I get a chance to showcase y'all talents on, like, the biggest stage. And for us, like, in the black community, bro, it's actually, like, inspirational to see two young black men start off from different grounds, kind of same grounds, and then get to, like, a, the highest level, level, bro. So I just really want to give you flowers, my guy. I appreciate that, bro. For sure, for sure. Thank you, bro. For sure. And you got to pat yourself in the back, you feel me? Yeah. You got to get some yeah. We start off, bro, like mental health check. From a scale of one to ten, how you feeling? Man, I'm a I'm a ten. I'm a, I'm probably at a hundred right now. I feel good, man. Okay, a hundred. A hundred. Damn, I'm mad. I'm mad. Ninety, then man. Okay, okay, for sure, for sure. I want to start from the beginning, right? Boxing was that like a soft decision? I had to get into the sport. Uh, my father bought me in the gym one time. I, I was nine years old. My father bought me in the gym. It was originally for my cousin. Um, my cousin Jermaine was my older cousin, like four years older than me. But uh, we was always together. He was like my big brother down there. Hey, I'm the oldest, so um, he was like my big brother. And you know, he just asked me if I wanted to box. It's been a rap ever since then. Okay, so your father brought you into the gym at what age? At nine. At nine. Yeah. Okay, and from age nine, this has been the focus. For sure, I ain't stopped. I ain't never took a break. 20 years strong. 20 years strong. Okay. What's your why? What's my why? Yeah. I got a few whys. Um, my most recent why is that I got a son right now. Um, he's three years old. His name is Amari. And that's a that's a big, big, big why. Um, but it's just how I was raised, though. My why, like, I don't really quit at the stuff that I got, especially if I'm good at it. Uh, I strive to be the best at everything that I try to do. Like, I really don't do the stuff that I want to do, like, mediocre. I be trying to win. I'm very competitive. Has your body changed over the course of your career? Nah, uh, hell nah. If they ain't changed, it probably just added more, like, more wise to, you know what I'm saying? Like, like now, like, say, all right, my, my family now is like a boxing family, like, because I box, you know what I'm saying? Like okay. my little brother box and then everybody come to the fights, you know, just bring my family closer and all that. So Would you want your son to box? I wouldn't mind. Like I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care if he didn't box or I wouldn't care if he did. Like, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't mind if he did box. Okay. I just want a trainer. Why? Wow. I feel like you'd be <laughs> the best trainer. Why would you train him? I don't know though. I don't think I don't think I would be good at separating being a coach and a father like my father. Okay, I can, I can understand that. If somebody hit him to you, you might jump in the ring. <laughs> yeah, that, and then, like, I just, I don't know, I might be too hard on him. You got to think I'm in a position where I know it, I know what it takes to get where I'm at. So if you want to take on what I'm doing, if I see you slacking, I might be too hard or, you know what I'm saying, I might right. be too harsh on him. I wouldn't want to do that. That might come between your actual Exactly. Biology. And dad and son. Yeah. I, I totally understand that. With you being from D.C., what's like, because I feel like every area we grew up in is, is different. Like in Baltimore, we got our own traumas going on. D.C., y'all got your own traumas. Whatever y'all got going on. Growing up in D.C., what's the thing that you kind of like learned that you kind of took into the ring with you? Oh, man. Uh, that a lot of people out here for self, even if they portray that they with you. I see our city, like, like you said, we got our own traumas or whatever from it. Anyway, everywhere is different. Our city trauma is probably that we are crabs in a barrel type type of city. Like I don't take on that as a person a lot as a personality or whatever like that because the way I was raised, you know what I'm saying. But I know 100 percent for a fact that 80 percent of this city right here is just either secret animosity, secret hating, or whatever the case may be. So that's like that's what I learned. And I apply that everywhere to the point where you just don't put nothing past nobody. Okay. 
When did you first meet Tank? Damn. I probably met Tank when I was like 10. Probably. Okay, this was in Baltimore and out here? I'm pretty sure it was probably here at the like one of the local shows or local tournaments um, at Sugar Ray Leonard. So when we was kids, we used to fight like a lot, a lot more often than the kids fight today in our area. Um, we used to fight like there used to be fights every weekend, and one of the main, one of the main places where the fights would be at Sugar Ray Leonard Gym. That's where the Golden Gloves happened. That's where the Junior Olympics happened. That's where everything like all the fights was at. So. My first time probably seeing him and meeting him was at Sugar Ray Leonard Gym when we was like young. Okay, like age ten. Mm -hmm. So it's like for you, it's like for the both of y'all, bro. Like in Baltimore, he's that guy. In DC, you that guy. Y'all, y'all came up. I think y'all like the same age. Yeah, right? he like probably like a year older than me. That's it. Right. So y'all came up same time. Both names buzzing. Both names popping. He's thirty and old. Face thirty other fighters. What makes Lamont Rose different? From the 30 other fighters oh, that he yeah, fought? that was 30. Uh, one, I'm me. I ain't, <laughs> and them niggas ain't me. <laughs> but uh, to get to it, it's like my skill level, my experience, and um, and my like determination and my mental is a lot different from the fighters that he fought at the time that he fought them. Um, like, and that's saying like, consp like, if you want to compare skill levels and experience or whatever the case may be, the guys that he fought um, wasn't really like, wasn't really like the, hmm, let me see how to put this. As an amateur, I was the 11-time national champion. Okay. And that's from little kid up all the way to men's division. I won on every single level as, a, as an amateur. Coming out of the pros, I got signed straight to a big promoter, Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy. And I won 20 fights straight, all the way up to a world championship where I had my first loss. Um, after my first loss, I bounced back, beat several contenders, and then won a world title against a guy that tanked for. So it's like I have the skills and the experience, the same skill and experience as Tank do. The guys that he had fought, they levels wasn't on the same. So when they say it's levels to this, that's how that's what that's how I say that. You know it very when somebody get a cool and meet, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, for sure. No, nah, for sure. Uh, okay, so all right, look, cause the records, the, y'all record damn near the same. Just uh, like like what four or five fights off. Yeah, and you know he don't got a loss. So. He don't have a loss. I was I wasn't even counting loss. Like, yeah. I meant for like experience wise. Mm -hmm. Like that, like let's talk about that loss, right? You go with 23 fights, then you get a loss. What did that kind of do to you mentally? That was tough for me, honestly. It was tough. That was probably one of the tough, tougher moments of my life. Because um, who plans on losing? You know what I'm saying? Like I told you, I won on every single level. So to run into my first defeat, it was kind of hard for me to accept. But when I actually did accept it, I adapted so much and I learned so much to build off and become who I am right now as a fighter and as a person. So do you fight loves are kind of necessary? I think so. I Like, just for me, even though I ain't want to and I didn't, I ain't plan on it or nothing like that, it's just, it was just a little bump in the road and it probably was necessary to, you know, like, boot me in the ass a little bit, like, all right, get it together. So, now here we are. For sure. I ain't like Lamar. You one of the humblest dudes I ever sat down with, bro. Like, <laughs> like, I respect it, like, for sure. Nah, thanks, bro. For sure. You got a big fight coming up, right? I want to know, like, because everybody, look, when the TV come on, they see two people in the ring. They think it's just individual sport. But, like, bro, it's, it's a team effort. Yeah. How important has your team been, bro, in preparation for this fight? My team been super, super, super important. Like, even without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um. My father is my trainer and my manager. He's guided my career with the help of uh, Robert Diaz, um, who was the matchmaker at Golden Boy. Um, he not with Golden Boy no more. I'm not either. But he's still on my team. Okay. Uh, so him and my dad guided my career the perfect way to for me to be where I'm at. They got me the right fights. And not the fights that just 
fight the dudes that's just gonna lay down or whatever. I got tough fights straight out the back, like out the gate or whatever to build me for this moment right here. Okay. What's the best advice your father ever give you? I'm sure it's plenty. That, uh, but that's, I was about to say, that's hard. That's hard, man. Uh, I don't know specifically one thing that he told me that's probably the best advice, but uh, he always encouraged me to do what I set out to do. Like if I set a goal, achieve it. If I have responsibilities, take care of it. It's just like, that was the advice without him giving me advice because he's the example that I, I seen coming up and growing up. So his advice was just being him. I learned so much from him doing what he do for me, for my little brother, for my little sister, for everybody around him, um, for his brothers, his sisters, and his mom and father. So like I adapted everything from him. You adapted everything from him? Okay. Let me ask you this, bro. Um, you know, boxing has like its core fans, and then you got like the, the fans that come around for the big fights. The, yeah, the streaky we call fans. Them, we call them casuals. Are you, casuals. Casuals. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like yeah, it's like inconsistent casual fans. Mm -hmm. So you got those fans, right? Then you got some those fans. I feel like they they go with the highest better. Am I lying? Nah, you right. I feel like they go with the highest better. And then I feel like you know on the business side of the boxing, also. People are just looking at, all right, I'm looking at the odds, right, yeah. and everything. But then it's like for you, bro, you got the like the potential to take over boxing, to be the face of boxing, bro. The same way Floyd did when he went up against Diego Corrales for the Super Superfellow title yeah. early in his career. So understand that somebody like Floyd Mayweather, bro, who we all know they consider boxing go, mm -hmm. had to take his opportunity and take over, and now you had the same opportunity. Did that kind of like a chip on your shoulder? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I got a natural chip on my shoulder, but this right here, this moment, definitely probably, I probably got two chips on my shoulder right now. Okay. Like like you said, this is the opportunity. For me, it's the opportunity of a lifetime. Um, and I say this because Tank is highly regarded as one of the better fighters in the world today. Definitely, uh, you know, got the star power. Like like you said, they go with the highest bidder. They go with who they know, who they see in the limelight. Um, the fiscal aspect, the money aspect. But when I win this, come on, bro. <laughs> I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be the household name. I'm going to be the cash cow. I'm going to be the one that they regard as one of the best fighters in the world, even though I'm already there. I know that I just got to show everybody else come December 14th. Mm, it's like a double chip in your shoulder. Yeah. It's like, it's like, a, it's like, a, it's like, bro, when you understand who you are, what you're capable of, the outside noise don't really matter. Yeah, nah, for sure. And that's the vibe I get from you. Yeah. I feel like if you're a real grind, you understand that. Yeah, I've been doing this for so long, bro. Like, the outside noise don't affect me. For sure. Tank, he known for his power punches. You also, though. I'm sure your opponents can agree. Yeah. Tell you the reason. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. Y'all like y'all both known for the power punches. Is it, is there like a party that's thinking like this fight might not go the distance based off so any any one of us can deliver like a knockout blow any second? Uh. So for I mean for those who don't know, uh, a lot of people in boxing probably wouldn't consider me a. I mean like they wouldn't consider me a knockout puncher. That's my my opponents. My opponents, they know. They know I'm cracking. But um that's the whole thing though. They like the the image that's been like the fight the fight image is power puncher versus boxing and I'm supposed to be the boxer. So uh, you know, I think people will be in a be like surprised once I do touch them, like and they be like, Oh, hold up, he might be he might be dumb. The Reaper came to play. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure. So, you know, that's so I I mean, I don't know. I don't I always want to knock somebody out. I don't care like who it is or whatever case may be, whoever in front of me, everybody wants to see a knockout. And I right. wanna see me knock somebody out. So, you know, I 
if it don't go the distance, shit, then it's gonna be me at the end like this with my hand raised. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, I'm aware that I'm, obviously I'm aware that he's a power puncher, um, that he can punch. But I ain't, I ain't worried about that. I've been in there with people who can punch. Uh, aside from Tank, like who was your previous hardest opponent you ever went against? Hardest, like hardest puncher. Overall, really. I think I'm gonna tell you my toughest fight to date was probably. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna say my fourth fight, and it was be it was my fault. It like, yeah. it wasn't tough because he was so good or like he punched hard or whatever the case may be. I was bullshitting like in training and all that. I got tired and it just was ugly. I had to be like you know what I'm saying like my. I beat him convincingly, but it just wasn't. It that was my moment. That was a like a little moment for me to, I, right, this guy for this guy, this guy and that guy. Then like, what you gonna do with him? That was my moment. Mm. Like, oh, I'm gonna crush him the whole time. I went the distance with him, and it was sloppy and ugly. But that's because I was BSing. So I would say it was a, only a four round fight. <laughs> so, okay. So okay. that was like that was my like, that was my toughest fight. Only because you caused that though. Yes. Okay, not like he got in there with what he is because you want to still like I'm being a little what, inconsistent at the moment. Mm -hmm. Not probably, probably not taking as, much, as serious as you should. Yeah, be. exactly. I mean, you hear me that happens. Mm -hmm. If you look at Tank's last few fights, Ryan Garcia, well, Frank Martin and then Ryan Garcia, both of those guys had to cut weight to, to match his level. Yeah. In this case for you, like, you, you putting on five pounds. Now, for the average human being, bro, like five pounds is not really. If I get on the scale today and I'm 170 <laughs> and tomorrow I'm 175, I don't really, that don't really mean much to me. Yeah. But for a professional fighter, like, how much of a difference does that five pounds really make inside the ring? It's a big difference, uh, especially if you're considered a bigger, uh, a bigger guy at a certain weight. So from 130 to 35, it's kind of a big difference. But for me. I'm more com I would be more comfortable at 135 because I'm not a small 130 pounder. Um, I don't know if you've seen Tank in person or not, but I'm bigger than him. Like I said one time, he he is fairly like small. Yeah, like he just he just a naturally small guy. I think he fight at 135 because he is comfortable making the weight, and he probably don't have to make the weight. He make the weight differently at 130. Like I said that. That five pounds is different. He might not be comfortable losing them extra five pounds. You know what I'm saying? So me moving up to 35, I don't have to cut five extra pounds. And I would be more comfortable, more strong, have more energy, and be not lose more muscle mass. Okay. But you're, but you're still comfortable at 130. Yeah, for sure. Say the rules was reversed. Tank had to cut five pounds. Like... But do you think that that would like affect the outcome of the fight differently? This is all theoretically speaking. Like, yeah, it is theoretically speaking. But I don't know. Like, I don't know his system and how he lose weight or whatever the case may be. It might be tough. It might be. I think he can make one thirty though. I ain't gonna lie. He's small. Mm. I think you're in the range. I feel like you'll be you'll be still comfortable though. Yeah, that's my weight class. I'm still look. If y'all if y'all don't know, after even after I beat Tank, I'm gonna go back down to 130 and handle some smoke that I got down there in 130. You do have a decision after you beat him to either pick a weight class you want to go in. You want to stay at 130. So, is this 135 thing just like just just for Tank? No. I want. Hopefully, they let me. You know what I'm saying? Campaign at both. Okay. I do my I do my due diligence and try to handle my obligations that they want me to do to be champion at both if they let me. I try to do both. Okay. We need an exclusive, bro. When the fight comes, you walk over the ramp, but who you walking out with? Have you decided? Uh no, I got a list though. I got a list. I got a I got a number one and I got a backup and then I got a list just in case those don't work out. I don't want to spoil your number one. He ain't going to spoil it. I'm going to just say who the backup. Who the backup? I want a number one, but I'm going to just say who the backup. The backup is a rapper that, hmm. Unless you like our, com like our community know. Okay. Everybody know. He did a song with Lil Dirt. I'm going to say that. He did a song with Lil Dirt before. How recent? Fairly recent. 2024. From D.C.? Nope. You said our community. Nah, because our community listens to him. <laughs> A lot of people listen to him. 
I mean, put my album music. I don't see, know. see, <laughs> see, see, yeah. Uh, look, I gave y'all a hint, and uh, you know what I'm saying? It's up to y'all to figure it out. That's, we gonna, we gonna that's my number it. two, though. That's number two. Oh, that's so my number two. Even, he ain't even. Y'all ain't going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all going to be totally surprised. Okay. I can guess for you. Hey, I ain't going to let you know if you're right or wrong. You listen to Big Ass the Plug? I listen to Big Ass the Plug. Nope. But he on the list, though. <laughs> he on the list. I knew he at least made the list. He on the list. Okay. He on the list. Let me ask you this, bro. All right. So, for you, right? Because I, like, I was on your Instagram, bro, like, scrolling and whatnot. And, like, I noticed after your fights, it's like, even before your fights, really, you don't really do much talking. Yeah. Like, like I said, the humble vibe. Like, if y'all can fit it through the camera, like, like the, boy, the guy humble, no cap. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like you like your fish sure. you're talking for you. Yeah, you know definitely. Yeah, no, you ain't lying. Okay. So it's like, this fight, like, y'all not really doing like, a lot of trash talking. But you kind of trolling on Twitter in a sense. Kind of like, for instance, Tank posted the other day, like, everything's still a go. And then you retweeted that. It's, for you, like, is you kind of like, kind of psychologically putting a twist on like, I'm not going to do trash talking, but now I'm really kind of like, using nah. social media to kind of troll in a sense. It's different. I tell the, I'm telling people this a lot, like, because we follow it, we know each other and we follow each other. I know he a troll on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like, but you troll him back though. That's what I'm saying. I'm I, like, I'm for that. Like that's to me, that's what I do. Yeah, I think like every day I send like funny trolling shit to my people's like back and forth. Even my father, my father sent me funny tweets. I send them funny <laughs> tweets. All that like my little sister, and my little brother, we in a group chat. I send them all that stuff. So like Twitter is like the number one funniest app hands down. So like yeah, and then we follow each other. So I. Like I see him, like I don't do much talking, but it's just like it's competition. Like I'm, if I'm tweeting about the fight, yeah, I'm tweeting. I'm going to win. Yeah, I'm tweeting this. I'm tweeting that. Like I'm tweeting. I'm on my shit. So that's not going to change just because he can see it or I can see his tweets or whatever the case may be. And if I do see something that's, uh, you know, what I'm saying that I feel like I want to respond, then I'm going to respond. Okay, I think that's the best way you can put it. Yeah, and it's like it's not like it's no beef or nothing like that. Right. So you know, what I'm that's the thing, though, bro. Like, how, like, okay, I feel like it's like a it's like a thin line between when I see boxers like they. Of course, you gotta get the people they want. You got they want they want the social media hype, but then I feel like it's like a thin line between like the hype and disrespect. Yeah, for sure. Like as a boxer, how do you kind of like in this particular situation, you want to y'all have like a real relationship. Yeah. So how you kind of like stay on like that path for it though, like. You gonna get what they want, but like, and they like, I bang with you, but I'm not gonna disrespect you. Disrespect. Not disrespect you either. Yeah, hey, disrespect. Like, I, he hasn't disrespected me, and I ain't disrespecting him. But for what? It ain't no, it ain't no reason to. I mean, just because we rumbling, we fought already. Shit, what the hell? Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like now we doing it, we doing it for the world to see, and we both getting paid. Let me ask you this: Say for instance, bro, fourth round coming around, you just knocked Tank out. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Bro, bro, it, it, it's how life works. Yeah. Do you do you feel like that might impact your relationship? Nah, I hope not. Damn. The fourth round knockout was kind of like, damn. I hope not. Shit happens. I mean, he know that. If he see, you know that, right? Shit do happen. You right. It it does. But I feel like, all right, for instance, after the Ryan goes to his joint, like, Ryan was going crazy. Before the fight, after the fight, he tried to be his friend. Now, I don't know how much of that is, like, staged or whatever. Yeah. But, like, I feel like, like in the, in the athletic world, bro, like, once the business is handled, it's kind of like, uh, you on your side, I'm on my side. Yeah, I get it. But, I mean, like, for the most part, when I, I guess from what I saw, the shit between him and another opponent, it do kind of be, like, it be disrespect. So, I don't know, like, I'm different. Even if, if it's disrespect, woo de woo, like, yeah, we might shake hands after the fight, woo de woo, but I ain't hollering at you after that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's just how I was raised. I mean, it might be a gift and a curse, but if I don't fuck with you, I don't fuck with you. Have you been in fights where, though, you really had to, like, hit somebody hard in the rain because they really was all disrespectful stuff? Nah, that's, and see, that's the thing, too. Like, I ain't never fought nobody who was, like, super disrespectful to me okay. or nothing like that. So that's different. So, like, Cause I, I don't really think you understand like 
from a Baltimore aspect, the the power you potentially hold in your hand right now. <laughs> I'm, I, I was telling you earlier, bro, like, it's to the point, like, when the Ravens lose, the whole city be fucked up about that. We yeah. be, like, bro, that Monday, we don't even want to go to work. <laughs> oh, I we know y'all, I know nothing. y'all was sick this Monday. We don't even <laughs> We don't want to do nothing. And it's like, we never experienced a Devontae Tank Davis loss. Uh-huh. Like, we don't even know how that feel. Granted, people in Baltimore don't want to know how that feel. Mm-hmm. But you had an opportunity to, like, to give us that feeling. And, you know, recently I seen, like, YG Tech was on Twitter. He was talking about we whipping D.C. ass for the rest of the year. <laughs> Ravens today, Tank in December. We did get the win against the Commanders. Y'all did. Y'all did. did. But you responded and said, this shit different over here. Had to put a chip on your shoulder, bro, knowing that you can really potentially fuck up Baltimore, bro. Like, that's just how I want to put it, like, if I'm being honest. Did so, I put like a similar chip, chip in your shoulder? In hindsight, I don't really look at it like that. But when you, so when we sitting here talking about it right now, it's like, I can see that. I can definitely see, I already get the, the like the flack and the hate from people from Baltimore all on my Instagram and Twitter and all that. I just sit there and laugh. Because nine times out of 10, if I go click on their page, they follow them. Okay. That's just so backwards. How the hell are you following somebody and then next thing you know, oh, you this, you some shit, you I mean, can't do this, that. you want, I get it. So, I, so it really don't, like, it don't matter, but I know it's going to be times 10 after I win. Has that gotten to you, the comments? Because, like, if you go on the fly, like, people be like, finally, tank, finally fighting somebody that's worthy, mm-hmm. then some people be like, tank Ray with his ass, then some no, people so be like, on, Lamar with tank ass. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not some. It's a billion people saying I'm gonna get my ass whooped. Then there's some people who saying finally he fighting somebody. <laughs> then there's some people that are like, oh, it's gonna be a good fight. Then there's some people that's like, you know, oh, Roach, you got this. And then the the other billion like, oh, he's some he's some uh he's some shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He he this oh. You and and y'all Baltimore boys, you ready to die? R E Y, R E Y. Like, so like I be seeing it just because the notifications and shit pop up, and I ain't stunning that shit. I already got my I got my post fight speech already. I already give me, got. Give, me the, give, give me the give me the first like the first. How you gonna start off? Told you. <laughs> okay. Mic drop. Back to the locker room, back to the post uh, post fight conference. Tell all the media. Told you, and that post fight conference is gonna be insane. It ain't. It's gonna be calm, just like that. Told okay. you. Okay, humble beast, humble beast. Yeah. Hey. I'm not gonna lie. After the fight, you know you got called by Tech, bro. Let him know, like. Yeah, if he if if he willing to answer the phone, I know he <laughs> I know he gonna lose a lot of money betting on Tank. So you saying you saying don't 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 bet that cheese for this fight? They can do what they want. It ain't my money. Okay. Let me ask you this: Who you looking to fight next after this fight? Like tank over, win, lose, draw, whatever. Who you want next? Uh, like I said, I'm still the champ at one thirty. Um, but you say you got some smoke that ain't been cleared yet at one thirty. All the champions, I got smoke with all the champions. I wanted to, I wanted to unify at least one belt. At one thirty, okay. so uh, whoever the champion is, uh, whoever the champions are, hopefully I can just line them up and then take them out. But if I'm still at one thirty-five, um, and that's what I, you know, what I'm saying, like I said, I plan on doing both. If they let me fight at both, if they let me keep my belt at both, I would try to unify at one thirty-five too. It's a, it's a good fights that the, the fights are the champions are Lomachenko, Shakur. And um, another guy from Ukraine, uh, Dennis Baranchik or something like that. Okay. I feel like you and Shakur are really... You. I think people in the comments are actually wanting that fight, aren't they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, that'd be a good fight. Yeah, it'd be a great fight. Yeah, nah, they could fight. Shakur can boogie for sure. Okay, when you spar, right? You spar about Baltimore guys. I see him. DC guys, Philly guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I feel like... You spar everywhere around the, around the country. Okay, okay. And those guys that you kind of like doing a sparring match, you like, all right, like, I fuck with his style. Like... I might not say I might use that, mm-hmm. but like it's like all right, Shakur he got he got some he got you know he he nice with it. Yeah, I ain't gonna use his shit, but 
I'm from my own spin to it. Yeah, he got uh, I so I've been doing that since I was probably like, dang, since I was a youngin' for real, for real. I probably take bits and pieces from different fighters um, and try to implement it in my game for real, for real. Who's somebody that you really took a piece from, like an older fighter, like a Muhammad Ali? Uh, I've adapted some things from, from I want to say just like everybody, like. Hmm. Danny Garcia, um, you know, my dad, like, picked up on one of the things that he does, and he'll just say outside the ring, Danny Garcia. Um, even some amateur fighters that I done fought against before, too. Um, certain stuff that uh, Triple G do, certain stuff that my, my cousin Boogaloo used to have me watch uh, Sugar Ray Leonard when I was, since I was young. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you been seeing it then. Yeah, so I was young. So I've been just adapting and trying new things and um, seeing what works for other people and try to, you just, you know, put it in there and, like you said, on my own my own little twist on it. Okay. Before we wrap things up, I want to know, bro, we in the fourth quarter of the year. Like, December is really around the corner. Yeah. Give me a New Year's resolution. That's on the monster list. Like, something you got to do. Uh, New Year's resolution. Unify. The championships, unify the titles. Okay. The titles will be unified. The titles will be unified. <laughs> For sure. For sure. I appreciate sure. you, Martin. All right. Thank you, bro. We I look appreciate forward you. forward to December 14th. Yes, sir. For sure. Any last words, any comments? Uh, tune in. Like I said, if y'all ain't coming, because it's going to be one of the biggest fights of the year, and I know everybody want to come. But if y'all ain't going to come, buy the pay-per-view. Buy the pay-per-view. Like, buy it. Don't use the fire stick. Buy it. He said, don't use the fire Yeah, support your, support your black brother. Uh, for sure, for sure. Out of pay-per-view. I gave you an exclusive. Fourth round, knockout incoming. <laughs> Appreciate you tomorrow. Nah, that's hard, bro. Thank for you. For sure, for sure. Thank Thanks, you. Guys.